Well, and from the south, we go to the Caribbean. President Mejia, you have been you have been related to to topics of the land and the people. What is your vision of what could what could advance in Latin America in a, in a more solid solidarity vision? Thank you, everybody, for the invitation. And I feel I don't I don't look like a farmer, but I am still fighting for for my land and and farmers. I was born in a rural community. In those days, uh, many years ago, I don't want to tell you exactly how many years ago, but more than 60 years ago. I am almost as old as President Valle. Hey, hey. Uh, in those days, back then, people that lived the, the, the less bad, I had to go to school 50 kilometers every day. And first, I had to learn m many, many Europeans to ski. Because skiing in the mud, because I had to walk six kilometers in the mud. And I felt very happy. I, I will have to struggle until I be, until I became the min the minister of of and 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 my campaign was basically dedicated to the to the to the to the to the field the for production and the health of of the farmer and all the rights and all the love that we have to have for him and, and I thought I was doing a very good thing and also preparing my people from the fr my my farmers and some of them got better, some of them became lawyers, and I will tell them why. And then and then they will tell me that it was to, to defend the drug dealers and to have an unfortunate justice such as we, what we have now, which is a disgrace. But definitely, I still fight for, for, for my farmers and the field. And you are a country of, a, of an unmeasurable richness of agriculture, and protection of the environment, because this there is a very direct relationship that is very trendy now, and we have to know how to explode that. We have all all the natural resources such as water here. One of the few countries that still has a very a very a, a lot of water, and I recommend each of you to protect it. And of course, for that. With the preparation of the education, the formation of our professionals with a conscience that we need to protect that this this environment, ecological environment, even though it's very trendy now without knowing. But we need to be convinced. And in your case, if you let me make this recommendation, please protect this environment, support because in the long run, the 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 food uh, policy is the most important thing in in a country, a country that has nothing to eat. In the organization, in you know, everything that has to do with the prices, everything has to do with us. And for for them, it, we need to defend our producers, and we need to demand the countries that buy us with respect. I. A while ago, I was sharing with many of my friends, especially with Mr. Moon, when I was talking about why Taiwan, why Singapore, why Korea, why China also, why India, big countries and small countries, because human resources were respected and they were prepared. And then they face, in many cases, many, many people, it has caused me a lot of problems and a lot of sacrifice and an eternal problem with people that steal money from the state that we need to use justice. The institutions have to work for, for the welfare of everybody. As everybody has said, to bigger, there are bigger, big problems that shouldn't happen. But I recommend you, to, uh, as, as a, a farmer that is convinced, and, and I still live of that, and I'm still, my, my children are professional, and I hope my, my grandchildren, I hope there are some lawyers, some of them, some of my grandchildren are starting to be politicians. So luckily, they will give us some answers. Why is it that young people don't participate? They, they have gone to an American university, and they are struggling, they, they are still, 
and my grand my grandson is saying that he would like to continue and and I feel very people that are related do not leave the land do not leave your do not abandon your your environment because the education is the future we need to insist that the money of the state that that people that steal money should be punished and, and this is a war that I will that I will be fighting against corruption so that so that the state and the government can can make and enforce this law and justice in many cases is doing but we need to insist on this and I will not I will not be quiet I decided to do this unfortunately there is violence but but we, we will have we have to insist on this and we need to continue working and fighting against this and I mean producers big or small do not change your mind you have the most novel which is to feed a population rich or poor but to feed a population thank you very much well the topics continue on the table Me Mr. President Gonzalez Maki, the World Bank has said of the internal product, the 3% is only is only 3%, 27% industry, and the rest in in the service sector. How can we how can we lead how can we go towards this global towards uh, towards economic uh, world economy? Well, first of all, thank you very much for the invitation. I am a child here in front of all of these other people, so I am learning from them. And, and actually the three Paraguayans that are here, Mr. Wasmosi and Mr. Cubas and me, I'm a lawyer by the way. I don't, I, to be honest with you, I don't know much about economy because I was a president I was a president. I was a, a president in a times of crisis, of political crisis. Was president was Mosi, and and myself and and, and, Co and Mr. Cubas, they were the first ten years, the, the first ten years after after the dictatorship in Paraguay, and we and we lived ten years of crisis. Practically, we couldn't we couldn't even think about the economy of our countries and of our citizens. We had to weekly. Tr we, trying to to solve the problems, political problems, and especially the problem, the political problems of our times, were the the military and the civilians, the power that the military officers want, wanted to to carry on having uh, that such uh, after 40 years. So it was 10 years of of, of crisis, my dear friends. In which engineer was Mosi and Mr. Cubas and me can can give you give you our experiences in that on that topic because because there are countries in South America that that have uh, totalitarian um, governments and then after that comes the crisis. So I believe that Mr. Wasmosi and Mr. Cubas and, and myself, we can and we should and we are uh, to the service of peace of the world and especially South America. So, so this humble server So I agree with all principles that I have heard that have been that have been discussed in these meetings in in these plenaries or during lunch i am a, I, I i believe strongly in, i believe in the, strongly in democracy i believe in a world in a christian world full of love to our brother and and, and especially and especially our fellow our fellow countrymen and our neighbors, because we're all brothers, brothers and sisters in Latin America. My dear friends, I am very happy to have you to have you here in Asuncion, Paraguay. We feel very proud, Juan Carlos, Raúl, and myself, to have you here. Uh, notorious visitors.
So we can say at least that we are that I am here to help to to, to help I am here to help the um, world peace. Thank you very much. No, so next is President Cubas. Actually, if you think about it a little bit, we are thinking about which is politics. The, the politics can be defined as, as the art of, of, of ruling the public space that we all share. But if you think about it slowly, in Latin America, there are different uh, business schools, very prestigious, but there, are very, but there are very few politics schools. How is it that this is so important? How is it that, uh, that it hasn't been paid more attention to that? And even to share that testimony, that experience that has been mentioned by President Gonzalez Mackin regarding the crisis that he had to deal with during his uh, during his time in the office. So, Mr. President. No, this is the way. is more is more dynamic to to pass a microphone like this. Well, actually. Your, your your question to me is a little difficult to answer, given the fact that I am not a politician. I I, I got to I, I became the president in a moment of of crisis, because it was it was moments after uh, democracy. I was candidate I was candidate to the to be vice president of the country. And in a maneuver of of the parliament, of the Congress, 15 days after the election, the the candidate of, of our of our of our um, of our party was taken out. So, and according to the process laws in Paraguay, then I I became I became the candidate to the president for to run for president for of Paraguay. The most noticeable person in <laughs> even uh, even after that, I I am still proud to, to say that that I won an election in which, unlike unlike normal elections, there have been two groups that were completely antagonic. There was only there were only two lists. There was the red, the red uh, party one, and the entire opposition, uh, and, and the entire opposition had joined together their forces in one list. We did a campaign that that lasted for a year. The last 15 days. Luckily. We won the elections with a, a total majority for the vice president, for, for the presidency, and also in the Congress, in both chambers of the Congress. And, ov and obviously, politics wa was not my strong point. The, 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 the day after I, w we, I won the election, I will not insist on this topic because because all the dead people are good, but but they proposed me, you know, to tell me I I want to know how many ministries uh, correspond to me. I, I do I get to which I said, doctor, you bring me the candidates that you have, and we will choose the best. And if they're good, they will be chosen. This was enough for for a single ceremony. The president of the party be, uh, went to the Congress and, and, and gave all the, the his list of deputies and senators, with which we were a total minority in the parliament. We had to rule in those conditions. We believe that what little time what, what little time we were there, we did a good job. There were a few. There, there were lots of pro, lots of progress in Paraguay, but unfortunately, there was a problem during a manifestation in which uh, people were killed, and that 
and that is more than one what person one person of of good judgment should be able to accept which is the reason why I resigned so so I so we, we can say that this country has a lot of possibilities we have people we have problems administrative problems inside the, within the government we, we had them before we continue to have them now we hope that with time things can change the country is growing there are opportunities for people and and maybe if we improve the if we improve the social the, the economical and, and and also the education aspects we can fix those mistakes those defects and really have a, have a country that we all want a country in all paraguayans can have a space in which they can they can have a a, a good life and raise their children and educate their children within an ideal life that every human human being deserves. That is what we want for our country. And it's not necessary to be in the government. Right now I'm a businessman. I've always been. And I, and I try, at least I try within, within the policies of our policy, of my company, to, to treat people well and to make them feel proud to belong to, and to make our employees proud to belong to our company. And, and I want the same for our people, to feel happy, to feel, to feel proud to be Paraguayans. So, if, if we had a very short survey, if we, who here agrees that education is one of the most important tools if not the most important to revolutionize our reality, I will probably, everybody will raise their hands or not, right? Everybody will agree that education is very important. So I invite you to Mr. Novoa, the President Novoa, a message from an educator. How can we bring again to, to, our, to our everyday life that education of character that, that allows us to get back that uh, to get back on track that, that we might have lost thank you the, the, the advantage of, of being the last to talk is that you don't have much to say but I don't think so I don't think so let's see we love we love to blame other people somebody's always to blame even in children's games somebody is to blame so the guilt is the children, the university students, rebels, etc. As if the world has, has always been young. And today, the world, I, I will be very synthetic, in a, in a part of the world, there are three things. The relativism, which is terrible, because because youth is is fa faces with uh, the fact that everything is relative where we don't hear what is wrong with that that what, what what is wrong with mom grandpa what is wrong with that and what is good there are no troops i mean there are troops but but they don't want their they, they don't want to see troops so if everything is relative, and, and isn't that true? That's a top. That's a that's a very important topic, very dangerous topic. My dear friend Eduardo Walde, president of Argentina, he says, the man, the the problem is man. How how true this is? Which which man, Eduardo? Sometimes I think the mediocre man or the engineer sometimes I, I say to university students in Guayaquil I say boys be careful with mediocrity it's a plague be careful Ecuador we, 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 we can export mediocrity or mediocre people we cannot afford to do that in, 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 in Latin America to export mediocre people we cannot educate mediocre people however
Thank you. Now, what's the other topic? Andrei Marvot was saying the human condition. Which human condition are we giving our children, our grandchildren, the, the human condition that they have in the world in which, in which the truth act as if they don't exist? What do they mean they don't exist? Of course they do. But the values of which we talk about, we hear so much about, then after that, then after that we go to the grown men. The second topic is a note to commitment. Today young people live in 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 a in a very short term and in everything has to be immediate. Everything has to be today, right now, now. Today. That um that note to commitment have you noticed that young people, if they get married, they get married at around 30 years of age? It's like, it's like teenage years doesn't end in the in the in the early 19s, but it's extended. They live at home, they have food, they have laundry and everything. Teenagers at 30, of course. Why? Because nobody wants to nobody wants to get married. Why would I get married? No. Why, if I live with my why? I got lost. So there, there. But we have home. But we have a house and and clean laundry. And that, and that no to commitment. Yes. I can answer that. I can answer that up until tomorrow or next month. But to program one thing. We, I will ask Mario. There are some we, the the, the youth that that succeeded. We tried other things. They should. You, you you program one. You plan one week and then, and then we will have a good time. But after that, that in that immediate life, that lack of commitment of youngsters. In an 18-year-old man or 20 or 22-year-old young man, he wants to get a job in a company. He was told that companies are important in a very big company. And then he says, well, the manager of, pers of personnel, bring me your CV. Well, what, what the hell is a curriculum? What the, what the hell is a curriculum? I don't know. So hire this man so that he can have experience. How can we ask? How can we ask a curriculum or a resume for an 18 or 20 year old? What is a curriculum? It's a picture, a photograph. I was born in this place, this year, this date. My parents are Mr. and Mrs. X. That's a curriculum. So you need to what what there are not young people don't have a curriculum. That's another that's another lie. Young people don't have a curriculum because they're young. Oh, the adult. And third, the consumism. There there is a uh, there is a kind here. The first one is relativism. No to commitment, and the third. Consumism. They consume every everything. Today, there are there are no more supermarkets. Today we have mega markets, and you need to go with a wheelchair to mega markets, because those charts are for for all disabled men that are there with a little motor wheelchair. Where, where are the ice cream? Two blocks away. Where are the fruits? Four blocks away that way. The mega supermarket. The mega supermarket. The consumism, there's so much to consume. That there's so much to consume that we need to put it everywhere. Consumism is terrible. So, so the free market is, is making us consume. The free companies, free commerce, they don't make us free. And we, we live consuming. How much is a pair of shoes? How many how many shoes? How many pairs of jeans, of pants? The university has become a con has con become consumed because now you're expected before before you were a lawyer, you you will graduate as a lawyer. Now 
And you, master? Master? No, I'm not, I don't have a master's. No, I, I, I don't have a master's yet. Go, go get me a, a master's. And aren't you a PhD? No. No, I am not a PhD. Bring, go bring me the PhD. So we need to consume culture. We need to consume universities. We live consuming stuff. And the problem then is in this consumism is that we consume violence. We consume violence, not just not just products. We also see on TV channels. We see many channels. The, all these channels, and then a special a special edition of of a channel. And what do we see there? Forty, forty bullets per second. People people killing each other. Blood everywhere. And, and 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 since it's it's full f high definition, you can almost feel the blood splash in your head, and you and, and you go and you say, "Oh, young pe young people are so violent." And we we should ask ourselves, who makes that movie? Young people or us? Who makes the movies? It's it's older people. Young people consume violence, the consumism of violence, the consumism of of of, of uh, hit in the face. And I mean soap operas, for example. Sometimes, when my children are watching TV, they're watching the soap operas, and I say, I say, I say, look, look, they're going to, he's going to smack somebody in the face. Violence. And how do you learn violence? How do, how, how do, how do, how do young people learn about violence? They, they, we're looking at 40 bullets per second. People smacking in the face. The kick has to be eye in the. People kicking each other in the head. So violence, where does violence come from? From consumism. Who creates violence consumism? But there is violence even watching children's show. Children shows such as Mexican show Chavo El Ocho also contain a lot of violence. And and, and they hit him in the in the head, for example, and, and the boy goes crying. When we love when we love Tavolocho is a children's show, and we need to also acknowledge that it's a children's show that also contains violence. And we need to ask ourselves, what contains a world of violence? The human being, hypocrite, that handles millions of dollars in television, in pro on projects and products that poison the minds of young people and turn them into what? In a receptor of violence, in a receptor of of all these problems, of course. What 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 can we expect them to be? What can we expect? What what can what can governments do? In in a given moment, we can, we we could prohibit pr programs of violence, but but we can't. But this is a free country, democracy. Where is democracy then? And we love it. And what if we what if we ban all violent shows on TV? What happens then? Then nobody watches anything. Then there are no more good shows. No. The world we are the the world we're building now is a world built for the adult by the adult against the people that are coming after newer generations. We are building a, we are building a world against current youth against young people. To make more money by multinationals, multinational companies that don't care about people. The man is not important to multinational companies. Dollar, the the almighty dollar is what really matters in the world today. It's not love. It's not. It's not any of those things. It's not principles. We have removed that from schools, important schools that 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 used to be to learn how to love your country. The day of the of the of the sim of the national symbols in in Ecuador, for example, have been removed, and now instead Halloween is celebrated in Uruguay, in in Ecuador. So now instead of being instead of learning how to learn our country, we are learning about witches. And who invented that? The prof the teacher in the school. We have sold the idea. We have sold our hearts. We ha we have sold our conscience. The man, adult, is is guilty. Is to blame for uh, for the current situations. What can what can we former presidents do? Well, well, we we have to finish this off.
We need to finish all this fake hypocrisy off. And, oh, and believe that this is the way we are we are educating young young people, that this is the way that we are educating the next citizens of the world. We need to finish this off, and we need to finish with, with a, cutting cutting it with scissors. It, it's not on on the long term. No, no, no. It, it has to it has to end as soon as possible. Otherwise, otherwise, what kind of world are we leaving to our children? Thank you very much. Well, it was very nice to hear so many opinions, so many different, from different approaches and different perspectives. So, President Cerezo, your turn. This is the ice on the cake. Well, there is not much to say but to talk about the presidential mission. Well. Look, I, I would like to address these words to the people that are here from Latin America and many of our friends that come to the meeting of, of, of the World, Global Peace Foundation from other parts of the world and and that probably don't know much about uh, Latin America that we are talking about here in this meeting. And some of these things, I would like to resume some of the things that, that, have, been, that have been said here about Latin America and I would like to start with I would like to thank sincerely the opportunity that this Global Peace Foundation is giving us to meet to uh, to all of us former presidents the presence of of so many former presidents is one of the most important cha in uh, changes that have happened in Latin America one of the most important changes that have happened in Latin America because because what I, oh, as much as I can remember, in Guatemala, before I was president, there were two presidents that were chosen by the people, and the last one, that was Mr. that was President Arvens, and he was overthrown in a conflict, in a, uh, organized by the CIA of the United States, and and the extreme right movements in Guatemala, and after that we had um, a total totalitarian um, corrupt and governments for many years, dictatorships of all kinds, and this happened in all Latin America, with with very few exceptions, that have been Costa Rica in Central America, Uruguay, in South America, and well. And well, a few other experiences that were short, for example, Venezuela, in which after a, a, a political agreement, there, there was an, an agreement that, that started democracy in the 60s in Colombia, in which, based on the agreement, a democracy was built. The, the history of all the presidents of Latin America was they will finish their 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 term sometimes three months sometimes 20 years and their destiny was the exile they will never stay in their countries and meet with other presidents that that will, that will never be done because those meetings were impossible because the president will become or an exile and he had he had to finish his career or he will have to become a dissident of the system that has just installed after him and therefore, and to see presidents traveling together in a, in a plane, like we did now with several ex-presidents coming from, from South America, it was impossible because in the practice, vice presidents, presidents were enemies of, because they have been chosen by one or others. Or, yes. They were never. I will never forget one president, President Mendez in Guatemala, who, who had elections. But right after that, he was controlled to do what he to do what the military wanted. He was my, my professor, and and he wanted. We wanted to go say hello the day he left the presidency of of the students about that day. And when we got there to look for him, the president had left because the new president. Uh, he had gone to the airport because and he had left the country because the new president had told him that he either left or or he will be killed because of some of the problems that he had had so one of the biggest problems one of the biggest changes that we have had now in this meeting
uh, in this, this opportunity, opportunity is to meet here to discuss among other among differences regardless of the differences of of opinions that we have in the last 25 years can be consolidated to be better and to be the foundation of to 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 build a more development not just not that economic economical development including equitative and that can and to, to help poverty in South America to end. That is the mission of this of this president mission. We have to know, in case you don't know us, the past 25 years have, that, that, that are very impressive. We went from being smaller countries that the, the, yeah, was produced internally and became in, and made rich just a few families. Latin America has become now rich countries that, that are past uh, five of the most developed countries in the world. It's one of the continents with the highest the democratic incomes and we've done that with our own effort it wasn't after a second world war the political leaders that are here seated we finished with the authoritarian governments or anti-democratic governments and we have built democratic systems that are letting us every day give more participation to the lower sectors, especially 12 of the sectors. You know who are two of the sectors? Young men and women. Latin America, it's a continent where women, which are fundamental for economical development, are reaching the presidency and are taking important roles that were never acknowledged before. This continent is one of the continent that has had the fastest growth. This growth is superior than most of the grow, growth rate that most countries have. Even the United States won't be able to ha reach the average growth of Latin America, which signifies that America, Latin America in 20 years, along with the tasks uh, and participation of citizens and leaders and hundreds of thousands of people who sacrifice their lives for the democratic process to be able to become something possible. And it's not a continent of hope. We're the continent of opportunities where you can come, where you can invest you can learn from the construction of our democracy and you can be partners of us in the path of construction. We've had great achievements. We have turned in, into a region where war has finished apparently forever. We're not a country like, for example, in the Middle East. In Europe, there's a possibility of a conflict between Russia and the European Union and Russia and the United States. There is word that there might be a possibility of a third world war. The Latin American country, ha, uh, the Latin American continent has problems, but we're trying to solve them because drug trafficking organized crimes and also wars that we had in the past and the dictatorships are things that were imposed by other countries in the past and this will not solve this will not be solved with the formulas that were provided by these other countries we South America and Central America we rejected resolutions that were given by the Soviet Union and North America in the fight against uh, the Soviet Union and we are building our own path or road but of course we have several challenges one of the challenges is the lack of opportunities and the poverty the second challenge is a new educational system as it was said before to turn 
education in a basis instrument to change the structure in the society of Latin America. We have the challenge of solving a discussion that we have right now. What is the best democratic system that we can build? There are several models that are being set and we've we are doing all this through the community's participation through discussion and through the different points of views to do it in a Latin American model and not like other models Korea Taiwan Indonesia which was not mentioned of course Singapore and in Latin America, we have Mexico, we have Chile, we have, of course, Brazil. We have Costa Rica, which is an example that we have to systematically act because it's a small country that is in the best places of human development. In spite of having limited resources, they were able to succeed with their own resources. So that's why my dear colleagues the presidential mission is here to keep cutting that past that we don't want to go back to we want to tell all the leaders we don't want to go back to that leadership that was based on dictatorship we want to keep reminding you that this stage of solutions are the solutions that were found by us and we want to tell the presidents to look at the future with optimism because if you trust because if you rem remember and see how many resources we have compared to the world if we realize that we have the most biodiversity in the world and most amount of drinkable water and the most amount of young people with ethnicity we can say that Latin America will be an example of how to find own solutions for its people for its future and to become into one of the greatest continents of the world to try and help others to find their own solutions that is the mission of the presidency bueno. Muchísimas gracias. Quiero pedirles un fuerte aplauso. Thank you very much. I'd like to ask for you to give a huge applause uh, for the presidents and also for yourselves that uh, have provided us with your valuable time.